think less than two years after the very public failure of the COVID vaccines, that more people in this country would be skeptical of brand new pharma products. And maybe they are, but they don't seem very skeptical of Ozempic which is a diabetes drug that apparently, at least in the short term, can help people lose weight. And on one level, you can see why they're not skeptical. This is a very fat country. That's a huge problem. And a lot of people, a lot of us, wouldn't mind losing 20 pounds by taking a pill. So why shouldn't we? Well, we thought it'd be interesting to hear the other side, a side that you are not hearing on the question of Ozempic from someone who knows a lot about it. Callie Means is the founder of TrueMed. He once worked for Pharma. He definitely does not now. And he joins us today in studio. Kelly, thanks so much for coming on. Pumped to be here, Tucker. So you want to lose I 20 pounds. I'm Pumped speaking from experience. Here. You want to lose 20 pounds. You don't really want to stop eating pizza. This seems like a super quick way no, to get true. healthier. Not true. You still have to... Um, decent, why wouldn't you take Ozempic? Why shouldn't I take Ozempic? Deficit. There's Deficit, three so. big reasons Ozempic is very problematic. And I think really the Rosetta Stone to understanding what's gone wrong in healthcare and frankly, pharma industry corruption. The first point I want to make is that if a fish tank is dirty, you clean the tank. Mm -hmm. You don't drug the fish. And in America right now- <laughs> So they won't notice. In America right now, we've got a very dirty tank. 50% uh, of teens and 80% of adults are overweight. And this has happened in just a generation. We didn't become systematically lazier in the past generation as Americans and frankly suicidal. Um, something has happened. And the core mistake of Ozempic is that obesity is not an Ozempic deficiency. Obesity is not the root cause of the problem. Obesity is one branch of the tree of underlying metabolic dysfunction that's ravaging our country. Um, as we talked about with over 50% of Americans having prediabetes now, 33% of, of young Wait, adults. most Americans have prediabetes? Oh, it's by some measures is up to 60%. Of the whole country? Of, uh, of adults and 33% of young adults and teens. And you have a diabetes doctor, you know, just a generation ago, wouldn't see one child in their entire careers uh, with diabetes. Now, diabetes, which, which again is cellular dysfunction, is cellular disruption, um, totally caused by environmental factors and what we're eating. That's mm. um, that's close to becoming right uh, upwards of 50% of kids. It's 33% and growing radically. Um, wow. Teens, 25% uh, have fatty liver disease, which is something you only used to see in elderly alcoholics. So there's a there's a metabolic health crisis um, that's caused by decisions, right? The USDA, which is completely corrupt, the guidelines that set nutrition standards, 95% of the guideline committees paid for by food companies, they say that a two year old, that 10% of their diet can be added sugar. We have more money from agriculture subsidies in America today go to cigarettes, go to tobacco than vegetables. 90% of subsidies go to highly processed food. We've propped this industry up. Uh, food stamps, right, which 15% of Americans depend on for nutrition, 10% of all food stamps funding goes to soda. We're the only country in the world that allows that. So we have oh, to wow. soda goes to soda. So, so, the, so the U.S. government pays people to drink soda? We, the U.S. government, direct from the federal treasury more than $10 billion per year go from the federal treasury to soda companies through the food stamp program. Wow. The number one item purchased with food stamps in America is addictive diabetes water. We prop that up with food stamps. As we talked about last time, I actually used to work and consult with Coke and we paid the NAACP and other groups to say it was racist to, to take that away. Um, we totally rigged the debate. So through a corrupt system, we actually subsidize mm. soda. We do 10 of these things, right? Oh, we use 10 easily identifiable things that are causing us, frankly, to be poisoned. And instead of talking about the root cause, we're saying that a weekly injection that you have to take for your entire life that costs $20,000 per patient oh. when 80% of American adults are overweight or obese, we're saying that is the answer for obesity. Um, we have a dirty tank and pharma has basically changed our consensus reality to say, you know, when all these things are happening all at once due to environmental factors, our savior, what we, you do the math on $20,000 per patient, 80% of American adults, we're talking, and this is clear on Wall Street, food stocks are going down, pharma stocks are going up because this is, they're doing cartwheels on Wall Street. This is on track because of government funding, because we are stand to put trillions of government funding into this drug to be the most successful drug in American history. Mm. Wow. So what, uh, wow. Um, there's a lot there. Wow. But let me just get back wow. to the individual decision Great. to take or not to take this drug. So you're overweight, you have pre-diabetes, and your doctor says, you know, what you would say, which is that's a very serious thing to have. Just because it's common doesn't mean it's not bad, it is bad. 
and this drug can cure it. Why wouldn't you do that? It segues really well into the second issue why Ozempic is so problematic. So on a societal level, you know, I think anyone that agrees, you know, if you're just just looking at this issue, um, you know, putting everybody and pumping everyone with Ozempic for their lives isn't the first thing you do to solve obesity. But no, even if it was not. perfect, no. even if it was right, even if it was perfect. But the problem is when you get to the individual level, hmm. this drug medically is a absolute disaster. Medically? Medically, it's a disaster. So all you need to know is that Novo Nordics, the company that makes this drug, recently passed LVMH to become the most valuable company in Europe. So this, this, drug, this company, most valuable company in Europe, they don't allow this drug for obesity in Europe. Almost all of Novo Nordics revenue is coming from taking advantage of Americans. This is not the first line of defense for obesity in any European country. It's not approved by the government regulators. They are saying on their stock calls that they're, all of their growth is coming from the US. They're taking advantage of a broken US system in the United States. Oh my when gosh. When you dive into it, even people in the United States who are getting government funding, insurance funding for this drug don't have to pay for it. They're okay, wait a minute now. Mm -hmm. So the manufacturer who is, is a European country uh -huh. where it's not legal over there. It's not authorized. They're not selling it. They're selling it to us. Right. That's crazy. 30% of them go off the drug within three months. So even though they're fully being paid for it, we're being told this is a lifetime drug, there's lawsuits coming just reported in the past couple of days on gastrointestinal issues and stomach paralysis. Mm. The drug itself essentially is uh, stomach paralysis. Um, what, dish, what is stomach paralysis? The, 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 the drug, the, the, what it does is essentially it, it, it sterilizes, it stomach, uh, paralyzes your stomach um, to, to make you not be able to process food correctly. And there's studies now saying that that stomach paralysis, the really uh, messing with your ability to digest food, actually stays after you go off the drug. So there's lawsuits now with people oh. with severe gastrointestinal issues oh, after coming goodness. off the drugs that's being pronounced and that, that's coming out in lawsuits. Um, additionally, because of that, <clears throat> you're consistently seeing patients who go off the drugs uh, gain the weight back. So that, that, that's almost, uh, I think, well, universally accepted even by Novo Nordics. When you go off the drug, you gain the w weight back. But again, we're seeing most people that take the drug within the first year come off it because the gastrointestinal issues, the stomach issues are so pronounced. Additionally, the EU, again, where this company is based, uh, just launched a, uh, a, a probe into suicidal ideation oh my caused gosh. by Ozempic. Wait you can't even minute. make this up. But the EU is doing a, uh, a, a massive probe because there's so many reports of increased depression and increased suicide. Mm. Now, I was debating a Harvard doctor about six months ago, and I, I brought this up because it's kind of obvious. Uh, your serotonin, what produces your contentment and happiness, 95% is made in the gut. And again, oh. Ozempic essentially is gut dysfunction. So when you mess with the serotonin and mess with the gut, a lot of unexpected things happening. And very understandably, and really what's to be expected, is we're actually seeing reports of a mass increase in mental health disorders and even suicidal ideation mm. uh, from Ozempic. Okay. Um, you know, kind of you just back up and ask, you know, this miracle drug is too good to be true. It's really coming through. Wait, so um, you're saying there could be a downside, it's not perfect? 30% of people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but I want to say this, and, 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 and I'm a libertarian, you know, I think uh, people should be able to take Ozempic. I think most <clears> drugs should be legal, legal frankly. Um, the problem is where the rubber really hits the road is there is an all-out assault to convince us that this is the appropriate drug. Again, th this everyone. is the target market. This is why the stocks are popping and why Wall Street's going crazy. It's the biggest TAM, the biggest target market for any drug in American history. It's 80% of, of American adults. Uh, but it's being fast-tracked. You mm. wouldn't believe this. But the American Academy of Pediatrics recently said that they recommend this as a first line of defense for teens. Wow. And the study basing that decision for the American Academy of Pediatrics to say that every obese or overweight teen, which is 50%, should take this drug, was a 68-week study. We had a 68-week study for a lifetime recommendation to 50% of teens in America to, to receive these injections. So, so I guess nothing would surprise me coming from the American Academy of Pediatrics, which seems really like a vector for badness, yeah. um, given their performance during COVID. However, you just still have to wonder, how, how did that happen? That seems reckless. Like how could a body like that, which has some residual moral authorities because of its name, how could they do that? 
you are transitioning like perfectly uh, into the third point, which is that the reason Ozempic, I think is such a important story in America today is because it's really, again, it's, it's the Rosetta Stone of understanding corruption. Mm. Um, our institutions, particularly the healthcare industry, yes. uh, has completely let us down. And you just step back and think about it. Pharma is the largest spender on TV new ad, news ads. It's the largest spender, Nova Nordic specifically is the largest spender on foundational obesity research. It's the largest spender on uh, medical to medical groups like the AAP. It's one of the largest um, uh, funders of actual civil rights groups. So you actually can't even believe this, but Novo Nordics is paying the NAACP to say that not supporting Ozempic is a civil rights issue. So you're racist if you're against giving kids a diabetes drug? It's on the NAACP website and the NAACP is a registered lobbyist oh, for Ozempic saying wow. that you are a racist because there's disproportionate issues uh, with obesity in certain communities, that you're a racist for not supporting government funding for Ozempic. Of course. And the NAACP takes money from the drug maker? They're a registered lobbyist for the drug maker. Oh, that is crazy. How can the NAACP be a registered lobbyist they for have anybody? A, they have a lobbying organization. They have to declare who their lobbying clients are. And as reported in NPR very recently, they are registered as a lobbyist for Novo Nordics. And on their website, they're saying it is an uh, example of systemic racism to not support federal funding for <laughs> Everybody so using that now. I mean, pharma. you just have to ask who people trust. People trust the medical I'm sorry. groups, they trust civil Th rights. That, th this is getting, I mean, it's just out, it's, it's beyond what is done now for the sake of the dollar bill. It is it is beyond what people in these organizations it's, are willing to do. To, oh, it's racist if you don't use so I'm I'm gonna just say this is my look my comment. I'm for weight loss drugs. Wow. I am I I'm not anti weight loss drugs. I know we we, we reacted to this and we're having a conversation about this, but what I'm for more so is health. Mm -hmm. Is taking care of your health. But if you need something to help you as you are in your level of your dieting change, mm -hmm. your exercise, yes. But you're going to sit there and, and your fat self going to sit there and eat pizza and take a shot. That's not the way to do it. And I will say this, that, you know, That's I way think to get it should sick. be in support of, you know, in support of healthy living. And I talk about that all the time. I think we've spoken about, you know, surgery that I've had. Mm -hmm. However, it's been a lifestyle of health and wellness for me. What I chose to do was contouring enhancement, and I'm, and I, I never stopped the lifestyle of working out, exercising. I've always taken supplements. I, I'm, a, I'm a true supporter of supplements. I like natural things. There are natural things you can take. However, if you do want to take a prescription medication to aid in weight, lo weight loss, I don't say anything wrong with it. I just will say do your research and then you have to make the best decision for you. But I also feel like most importantly, it should be in conjunction with a healthy lifestyle. And, and also on top of that, um, <clears throat> that product and that drug is so expensive and people are running for that. But you know, I'm I'm not a medical doctor, and I'm not giving medical advice, but you, there are clinics out here that will be, that are not from these particular brands. That are clinics that compound and make this kind of stuff that will be a little bit better than you going to these to these big pharma companies. <clears throat> it's it's a whole different thing. It's because this Ozempic thing and this semi and all these semi-glutides, GLP GLP ones. This is a it's a it's a massive thing that only blew up in the last about a year and a half, and now it's completely rave. And now a lot of these drugs are in and out of the pharmacy because it's so big. And but that's a problem. That means all these people <clears throat> are running to the drug first, and they're not they haven't been lifting weights, they haven't been training, they can't, and so they just go right to the drugs. That's a that the government will use that against you, and then that will. They will use those stuff, stuff against you in the long run that you don't want. You don't want to be that person. And I will say in regards to doing your own research, that that's <clears throat> where, you know, I guess the clinic you mentioned, there mm -hmm. are other resources that you could use in aid of weight loss supplements. Mm -hmm. But once again, we are not medical professionals. We mm -hmm. are not making any recommendations for you to go and get anything. What I said was do your own research and make sure it's the best 
choice for you, whether it's an herbal natural supplementation program or you are choosing to use a medical prescription weight loss treatment Correct. program. Correct. So do your own research. Correct. Scoops, they touch the media. You have a situation where uh, additionally, Novo Nordics, and this is reported, has given $30 million in direct bribes to obesity doctors. You would be hard pressed to find a doctor who treats obesity in this country who has not received some kind of donation, not not mm. research grants, but direct consulting grants from Novo Nordisk. Like just sending him mm. cash? Exactly. So How can doctors take cash from drug makers? Oh, th 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 this, is, this is what's done. The drug makers spend hundreds of millions of dollars a year in direct cash payments to doctors. But you can't get the drug except with a script written by the doctor. Yeah, who, prescription. Who, 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 who take direct consulting fees from how can that be legal? This is how, this is you know what you watch uh, things about the opioid crisis and how the opioid uh, completes the same playbook. You know, I actually when I was working for pharma, the opioid crisis uh, was in full effect, and there was a panel in 2012, and the panel was full of outside experts recommending guidance on opioids. The head of that panel was a man named Dr. Philip Pizzo, who was the dean of Stanford Med School at the time. He was a pain specialist. At the moment he was appointed to that panel, Stanford received a grant from Pfizer, who's one of the largest opioid makers, of $3 million for pain research. Wow. He appointed 90% of that panel, who are also conflicted, who received direct research and personal consulting fees from opioid makers, and they released re relaxed opioid standards. This is exactly what's happening in obesity. You have Dr. Fatima Stanford, the head of obesity research at Harvard, pay tens of thousands of dollars by Novo Nordics, just started a new directly directly direct no, no, not not to mention of course millions of dollars of research grants she's been paid tens of thousands well, of dollars how can harvard allow that there there are no conflict of interest rules in medicine harvard uh is supporting her and the nih wow. recently it came out that eight thousand uh research grants went to university professors who also have a direct conflict of interest uh with the topic and the drug they're studying how mm. can the doc i mean how can you be a physician even a teaching physician and, and do that. I mean, that's so obviously unethical. It's so <laughs> obvious, it's, it's so uh, omnipresent that this isn't, it isn't discussed. I mean, you're, you're saying this like, it, it, it's obvious, it's manifestly obvious. You hear this, most Americans are outraged. This is like, you know, you're swimming in water, you don't realize you're in water. This is how academia is. The food industry, if you, you know, taking it to food, which is making it sick, spends 11 times more on foundational nutrition research than, than the NIH. Pharma is the mm. lifeblood, right, of foundational scientific research in this country. <clears throat> and then you get to the NIH, of course, it's a revolving door between government and, and industry. Um, and the vast majority of NIH grants go to pharma research. So, wow. so the NIH is basically a grant making organization. All, and this is just statistical, almost all going to research that has conflicts of interest with pharmaceutical drugs. The problem is here crazy. is that every institution, all these institutions fundamentally make more money when we're sick. Ozempic True. doesn't cure obesity. It manages obesity for life. Mm. And that's a problem. Statins don't. I'm sorry, I should have asked it yeah. at the outset. You've made a couple references to it for life. Is that as advertised? Oh, no, no, that, that's so the if, if I sign up for Ozempic tomorrow, the physician will tell me you got to take this forever. Those are the instructions, yes. They, 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 they admit wow. that there's unknown metabolic oh, no. problems. <laughs> if you go that up. is that, that, too that's, much. That's, 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 um, that's on the box. No, no, this is a lifetime injection. The key thing oh here, Oh my Tucker, gosh. And, and, and again, getting the corruption, right? You're paying off the doctors. You're paying off the medical groups. 50% of TV news funding. I mean, you know, I, I, oh, I think I, it's- I've seen it. Yeah, and, uh, and you know, there's, RFK's talked about this back in the day with Roger Ailes. When you're, when 50% of your bills, speaking in the choir here, but 50% of your bills are paid by um, a certain interest. Why didn't the news media have any curiosity during COVID, why people were dying of COVID. Mm. Metabolically healthy people weren't dying of COVID. This is where the corruption and really where it all ties together. I, I'm sure we, we you describe that in a little more detail. We had probably the biggest event in American history since World War II, where we shut down the country, yeah. where we really, I think, showed our weakness uh, just physically and mentally as Americans. You know, American COVID deaths were substantially higher uh, than other countries. And research, you know, it, it's not argued, it has come out saying that the, the COVID was a foodborne illness. Um, dying of COVID was a foodborne illness. If you were metabolically healthy, if you had stable cholesterol, stable fasting glucose, weren't obese, you didn't die of COVID. Um, COVID disproportionately, overwhelmingly, even among older people, affected 
people with comorbidities mm. and we are a lot sicker in America. And the comorbidities were caused by eating bad food. Mostly. Comorbidities are obesity, heart disease, diabetes. Wow. Those are the main comorbidities. That, so if, if you did not have those, you were essentially not impacted by COVID and had an almost 0% chance of dying of COVID. So the media though, right, who's heavily funded by pharmaceutical companies, didn't have any curiosity about that. Didn't have any curiosity, maybe this is a 9-11 moment that we're not at our best in, in, as America, right? We are a sick, depressed, infertile population. Sperm count is down 50% in just the past generation. <clears throat> 25% of women now have PCOS, the leading cause of infertility. We are having trouble reproducing as a species. Wow. And these are all connected. And That's there was a deep. moment to That's talk about deep. this, but instead the media, the government institutions who are paid by pharma, pushed a pharmaceutical uh, solution with trillions of dollars of airtime uh, as, as the solution to our crisis. This, this was one of the greatest public policy mistakes in American history. What, after coming off of the worst public policy failure I think one of the one of the worst in American history with the COVID response on every level, you know, keeping the bars open and shutting down the schools um, to, to pushing a, an effective pharmaceutical solution instead of root cause solutions. We're being asked to trust pharma when 80 percent of the American people, their bodies are like rebelling against them um, with obesity, which are clearly a sign of, of underlying issues where Ozempic and daily, you know, weekly shots is not the root cause. This, this just on its face doesn't I make agree sense. With and then them, you trace 100%. the corruptions. Again, Ozempic wow. is paying off everyone. They are one of the t five largest funders, the company itself, one of the five largest funders of news ads, one of the you know, top research funders of obesity research, largest funders to university on the obesity topic. And, and the thing I, you know, kind of, kind of ram home here, Tucker, is you just have to look where the money is. So if you actually look at the analyst reports that are propping up these <clears> stocks, <throat> they're assuming an increase in obesity. So you talk about all the, like the Nova Nordic's largest company uh, in Europe. They literally, in, in the, where the money hits the road, where people are investing billions of dollars, they're assuming increased rates. Uh. Okay, so I'm gonna say, you know, <clears throat> this. I wonder if the people who are choosing to use that as a support in losing weight mm -hmm. and all those and also those who have are using could be using it for, you know, diabetes treatment. Mm -hmm. um, if they know it's going to be a lifetime thing mm -hmm. or if they think it's going to be something that's just temporary for them to get down to a certain weight and then they're able to get off with it without any, um, <clears throat> you know, I guess I'm having him having any future problems later on or impediments is what I was thinking. So if so, with the, let's say, for example, or any semi semi glutide, <clears throat> if you get off. All right. Let's say let's say you lose in 12 in a year, you lose 50 pounds, okay. 60 pounds in a year from just doing that. Mm -hmm. And your habits have not changed. But so much once you come off of it, you're going to get if your habits haven't changed. Because the same food you were eating and the same way you were going about stuff has not changed. So you're going to you that you'll do a year's worth of reversal in about four months or less and you'll reverse it. But if a person is on a is, is on that semi-glutide and they have lost and they have habits have changed and they start doing more in the um, caloric. Um, was it caloric deficit deficit mm -hmm. and they exercise and they eat right and they come off the semi-glutide. You may gain back. Let's say you gain five to seven, five to 10 pounds back. It's going to be minimal, but you are going to gain something back because with the, the drug is no longer working on the digestion anymore. OK, so, so this is the research that you've done mm -hmm. on this. Just mm -hmm. want to make sure and be yeah. very clear. That, Absolutely. You know, this is, this research, is research that I have that done, you've done. And for sure, so you are able to yeah. speak on that. OK, because I told you I'm not against that. I'm not against that. What I'm against is a mindset that wants a fix for something that you haven't fixed yourself to a degree. Because, you know, I'm, I'm going to put this better. If you all you want to do, you don't want to exercise. You just want to eat and unhealthy. do all your unhealthy. You want to eat unhealthy and do all the things and you want to do a pill. You are putting yourself in a chaos down yeah, the road. You're risking your, you know, the research supports that the healthier we eat, the better, you know, the more um, we exercise, the more we do things to promote better um, increased mental health, you know, in all of those things in conjunction are going to um, um, could likely, thank you, that, that's the word, could likely 
increase our vitality. Right. There's so much, so much research out there in health and wellness. You have to go and read. There, there are so many health and wellness um, gurus, expert leaders in the industry. You all see them on social media, and many of them support a healthy lifestyle, uh-huh. which encompasses eating, eating healthy, exercise, getting sleep, sunlight, vitamin D. And other sources of all these vitamins combined in a, in a live food. I mean, we can put some recommendations in the chat. I mean, in our comment section, can, yeah. uh, the description of everything. But I just want to say, you know, you have to do the research for yourself. And this is a very good video. Mm-hmm. You know, I think many people, you know, we like to, what is our motto on this channel? Learn, take positive action, laugh. So we want you to be able to get value and information that is going to help support your livelihood and your well-being. So that take take what he's saying, you know, as realness because he's a medical expert. And also follow up with your own research. Your own research. That's the key. That's the key. And also for me, and just throw this in there too, for all my, all my guys as you start getting older, because I know a lot of my guys on this channel are um, over – 35. Um, as we get older, things you need to, ch- I'm not a medical device, but I'm just telling you from, from a man, as you get older, your own personal, uh, my experience. own personal experience, as we get older, even if we lift weights and exercise, we start to hold weight more and things like this, things change as we get older. And we want to st- more so for me, and we want to start checking our testosterone levels. And that's when that's what you need to worry. If you're holding a lot more weight and stuff like that, you need to check on that first, check on that first. Um, so all right, man. All right. That was people. good. It was good. So, you know, take the information and do your own research and make healthy choices. You know, we want longevity. We want vitality. And, you know, it's what he's saying is very, very good information. It is. Yeah. All right. Love you guys. Appreciate your support. We really do. 2024 be more. Talk less. We'll see you on the next one. Yeah.